What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another beautiful day on Taking a Risk with George George. On today's episode, we're traveling to Venice and you all get to come with us, so let's go. All right, folks, check this out. Before we get on our bigger adventure today, look what I got the kids. Oh. <gasps> So super duper excited to take them fishing. This is going to be something that they're going to absolutely love and it's going to be in several of the episodes. So stay tuned for all that. Check it out ladies and gentlemen. I was able to retrieve my splitter back. We were in the area for a birthday party so I decided to go back to the site and there was a gentleman using it. I knocked on his door. It was kind of late. I felt kind of rude. But I explained to him what happened. He was so nice enough to return it. I mean even if he didn't I would have taken it. It was mine. So he was nice enough to help me return it which is great. So. Thank goodness I got this back. Now I can actually start pumping water back into the black tank instead of having to take off our water and put the green hose on. Now I can have both of them attached. This is just more convenient, way easier than having to do that. Check out this tomfoolery. These birds just sitting on top of people's RVs. How weird. And they just keep calling. I think it's because we have food in our trunk and we're packing up to get ready to go. They're trying to get some of it. All right, so on our way to Venice, the honey wanted to stop at a five below, and I noticed on the window there, what did they do to my main man, George of the Washington's nose? They gave him a proboscis. Well, actually, George, George, did you know that there are several studies out there that have pointed out that having a big nose is related to a sense of power, leadership, ego, and independence? That makes a lot of sense. Get it, sense of smell? because our man George Washington fought for your independence. He had a lot of power, great leadership, and I'm sure he had a big ego. Who wouldn't in that position? All right, the honey just came out of five below, came over and told me they have absolutely nothing of what she was looking for. So I told her to head over to Ross, because Ross, you could dress for less and these, you have what you need for a lot less. All right, surprisingly enough, and unfortunately, Ross, dressed for less, did not have what we're looking for. So now we drove an additional 10 minutes to get to a Target, which the honey loves, so she'll probably come out with Starbucks, even though she already had Duncan. But we're so close to Venice, I can feel it. Good Lord, woman. What? Two? Yes. Oh my gosh, they're water pails. They're water pails? Look how cute they are. These are so much better than I think what you would have gotten from and Fly look, Below or Ross. Yes. Zips Zifters, yes. And there's, I almost brought my metal detector, but that's just as good. There's a small bucket. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, you're gonna have oh, some. Yeah, she woke up because of the buckets. I'm so pumped. Oh, yes, let's go, 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 I go, can't go. Wait to use them. This is for me. Oh, you got one for you and one this for, the is kids? for the kids? Yeah, wonderful. That that works. Yes. <laughs> Check it out. We're on the drawbridge. This is what takes us to Venice. I'm pretty sure this is how we cross over. I didn't know there was one single little drawbridge that gets you over all the way to Italy. Venice? We're not going to Venice. Yes, we're we are. You told me this morning we're going to Venice. No, we're going to Siesta. Beach. I thought we were going to Venice Beach. No, not today. That explains it because I was like, when are we going to get on this airplane? Dang it. So this we're still in Florida? Still in Florida. I had to cancel our plane tickets. Oh, Come oh. on. Saving money. I like Yes. It. Very nice. Saving money. Good Lord, folks. We have literally, literally, literally been driving in this parking lot for at least 20 minutes waiting for spots to open up people are just hogging spots they're waiting camping all kinds of stuff people are standing in spots holding them for other people that's how crazy it was i kept telling them i need to film and film and film but she wanted to watch with me my goodness that was nuts i actually had to get out of the car and ask somebody who was just sitting in the car are they leaving and the lady gave me a snooty response says, eventually but the husband was nice he said yes i'll get out of your way so thank you thank you thank you to that wonderful gentlemen because we finally got a spot and somebody was coming up the wrong way a lot of people are coming up this wrong way look it's an arrow pointing that way we have people that are coming that way so i was waiting over here the gentleman was obviously parked right here and thank god he backed up this way and blocked them from trying to take the spot because they were thinking they, they were, were going to get this spot. they were 100 percent. i was ready to jump yeah she was ready to jump out and block the spot but i told her he's got us he knew what he was doing he was helping us so i was ready to start fighting around with parking spots if we've been driving in this parking lot for 20 minutes and my kids are getting cranky the honey's getting cranky i can get cranky too believe it or not i was getting ready it was gonna go down holy smokes folks i thought today was gonna be a great day to go to the beach because it is super bowl sunday and i'd much rather be doing this than watching a bunch of grown men tackle each other for a ball pigskin or whatever it's called whatever 
It is. I don't care about football anymore. But this is absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness, this beach is packed. We're gonna get here in just a second. We've got to get up on this curb here. The sidewalk. I'm gonna have to help the honey lift that up. Kids are of course attached to mom. You wanna just go up? You wanna walk down? Okay, all right, we'll walk in this new parking area, but I'm gonna show everybody real quick what we're looking at here. Wow, this is the first real beach we've been to in like several years. This is beautiful. Let's go. I'm gonna get the drone up in just a little bit. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Now we are actually meeting friends here, which is pretty cool. It's Evelyn's best friend, Evelyn, and her mom and dad. So we're gonna hang out with them if we can find them in this giant beach that's loaded with people. Like, I didn't know other people didn't care about the Super Bowl. That's good to know. Check it out, folks. Of course, our first stop is gonna be at the restroom. We've all gotta change into our bathing suits, but check out everything they have here. A sea turtle pavilion, super duper excited for that. Siesta sun deck, sunset pavilion, beach, access mats, that sounds cool. And the Siesta Sand Plaza. Ooh, let's go. They're leaving me. They're leaving me. What? I wanna be in the sand. I wanna be where the sand people are. Thank gosh they have these beach mat accesses because this thing I'm pretty sure is terrible on the sand. Look at him. He's just ready to go, go, go. I wish I had some help. This is absolutely glorious. I think I've found my happy place. I feel like I'm finally back where I belong, which sand people, I keep telling you guys I love sand, but there's also a beautiful body of water to cool off in this hot, hot sun. We didn't bring any sunscreen. People like me forget that sunscreen is a necessity especially on days like today where there's no cloud coverage and these kids they have fairer skin than i do so hopefully oh no look that hard pack sand turned into nice fine sand like yeah we're going that way oh yeah the hard pack sand is that way here i got this all right <laughs> that had to come to the rescue i was stuck in the sand so we're backing it up oh Almost, yeah, just as a little head. This is the shape shell service. Uh, whoops. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful. This is where we're camping out for the, the remainder of the day. In this sand, folks, it is literally like fluff. So nice and cool. You would imagine it to be hot on such a hot day, but this is absolutely wonderful. It's like walking through warm-ish snow or not-so-cold snow, but I cannot wait to get into this wonderful water. And I just remembered, I didn't bring my underwater case, so you guys won't be able to come with me. Okay, check this out, folks. I was just notified that along the beach, there are several jellyfish. Look, there's one right there. There's two right here. Oh, no. There's more down this way. So we might not be going into this water, especially if the kids have a chance of getting stung. Now, I did actually bring a jellyfish sting kit as a joke. Let's test this water. Oh, my God, it's freezing. Lee delicious. This is wonderful. How amazing. Oh, that is the biggest sigh of relief I've had in a decade. How amazing. I could melt into this water right now. It is so wonderful. These waves are a little extreme, so I am a little nervous for the kids to get out there, but with me being close by, I think they should be okay. We won't go too deep. Oh, there's a jellyfish in the water. Right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm looking out for other ones, but there's one right there in the water. I'm chasing it. Come back, jellyfish. I hope that these ones don't sting too bad. Checking for others. Oh, this is going to be a great day. Regardless, sting or no sting. Check it out, folks. Baron's first beach. Does that not sound so perfect? Look at him. He loves it. And this sand is so soft. It is nuts. It's like so fluffy. Yes. It is literally snow that's warm. Yes. Hello, buddy. What do you think? I'm going to take Jackson here in a second. We're going to check out these jellyfish. Awesome. Absolutely beautiful day. Like, I honestly feel so blessed to even be here. This is ridiculous. I'm so happy to bring you guys with me. Check our trail that we came through. I got to follow it all the way back to the shore because the honey's trying to feed bear. Wow, that is absolutely so cool. Some people are so creative. I gotta follow it back all the way to the entrance because we brought a spoon for Baron to feed him with, but I dropped it somewhere in the car. So I either gotta go grab that spoon and clean it off or I need to find a restaurant that might have a spoon small enough to fit his cute little mouth. 
Oh, but I definitely want to give you guys a view of this or like an overview of this. I will be busting out the drone as soon as possible. It's kind of late in the evening. It's about three o'clock right now. And apparently there's a lot about to happen. I hear it somewhere they're mentioning. I don't know if the microphone is picking it up because there might be a lot of wind or some other sound of some idiot talking nonstop, but there is a drum circle that happens here in the evening. And I was just notified because I don't pay attention to sports. I probably mentioned this earlier, but I forgot if I did. Uh, that the Super Bowl is actually in the evening. So that's why there's a lot of people here. But the people that we're with today, the friends that we met up with, Dan and Melissa, wonderful people, and their beautiful daughter, Evelyn Rose, just like our Evelyn Rose is so cool, we became best friends instantly, notified us that there's a beach not too far from here, only about 30-ish or so minutes. It's just as packed as this, but it's way more beautiful. They were saying there's no uh, buildings in the background. It's like wilderness, and that sounds like a place for me to be, and I'm still following the trail. Well, that was your mountain, buddy. You can have it. I'm not going to scare you away. I don't need this. You know what? Actually, I'm going to take it now. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, I hear it. That might not be the drum circle they were thinking of or talking about, but it definitely is a drum. And these jellyfish that are on the uh, shore here that are coming in, I was able to flip one over. Well, I didn't actually do it. The water did it, but I was able to watch it get flipped over. And they didn't look like they had any tentacles. So I'm a lot more comfortable with the kids being around them. They're obviously not playing with them, but they are dumping water on them and stuff like that, trying to keep them alive. It's really adorable. So I'm a lot more comfortable with them being around the jellyfish. I tried to look them up, but Google Lens can't get a good picture of them because they're 99% transparent. But from what I could tell from Googling, clear jellyfish with pink flower-like insides, which is the best description I could come up with, they may or may not be comb jellyfish, which don't necessarily sting. I think all jellyfish have the capabilities. I'm not sure on that. That might be just talking out of my insides there. Well, I'm almost there. Wow, that was a lot shorter than I thought. Either that or I've just been talking for three minutes straight. <sighs> I need to take a breath at some point. Uh, and there it is off in the distance. There is the drums. I don't know if that's a drum circle, but if I had to guess, this would be the beginning of it. And the seats fill up really fast. So I might let them know on my way back that the uh, drumming has indeed started. And this walkway goes so far close to the water. That is so cool. What a beautiful thing to have. But here's where I'm trying to get to. The car is kind of far from that. I probably should have brought my sandals. Forgot. I'm not going to be on sand the entire time. The sand just feels so amazing between my feet. So I didn't want to wear sandals all the way, but I did forget I was going to get onto concrete. Dang it. All right, and for those of you that are wondering where exactly I'm at, because I honestly had no clue, we are here at Siesta Beach. So now we all know. This is Sarasota, Florida, number one beach in the USA. Mmm. What a claim to make, but I can I can back that up partially because what a place to be. This is absolutely beautiful. I have a feeling that heading back to the car, I'm going to get swarmed by other people who are looking for parking spots. I'll try to be in and out as quick as possible. Don't want to draw too much attention. I should probably put my key away, but my pants are a little wet and I don't want to put the key in there in case it gets moist. I'd hate to damage our only key for our vehicle and be stuck here. That could be the worst thing. Oh man, maybe I should destroy this. I mean, don't tell the honey I said any of that, but she probably wouldn't mind. She'd probably love to stay here. There's tons of hotels. Look at this. Hotels upon hotels upon hotels. So there's definitely places to stay, but I guarantee they're not cheap. Oh, beautiful. They're setting up. Absolutely love it. You've got a friend in Jesus. That is absolutely true. He is the way. I love it. Thank you guys so much. All right, I did my best to sneak between the trees to get to the car. Luckily, there's nobody over here. I'd hate to disappoint somebody because this is such a beautiful beach and I'd hate to have to tell somebody that we're not leaving. Whew. Somebody's right behind me. He's blind. Oh, he's going to ask me. Ah, punch right in the gut. I had to tell them sorry. Not yet. I'm just looking for some spoons and forks. There's the fork. I'll be right back, folks. All right, mission failed successfully, I guess. I guess that's the best way to put it. Ah, sorry, I got to go enjoy this beach some more, sir. And madam, absolutely lovely here. Oh, some metal detectors. Oh, I should have brought mine. I thought about it, but I was like, you know what? I got to get to this beach and I got to enjoy this more than anything. I don't have time to just detect things. All right, so I may or may not have found a shortcut to where we are because, yes, I actually think it is. It is the only green tent. Yes, I found it. So we came this way through the sand and now I'm going straight ahead. Look at right there is where we are. That green. Oh, wow. I nailed it on the first try right there. That green, uh, I don't know, tarp thing. With the four things, I know I'm walking so fast trying to get back to him. There he goes, a better look. 
That's crazy. And this trail leads right to it. That's where I left from. And that's where we came in from. But this is definitely the way to go. How cool. I'll make sure to let the family know that I found a shortcut. Not that I want to leave her any sooner. I'd walk all the way down there and then walk all the way back before we get back to our car. How cool. There's actually a lady that I passed going back towards the car. And now I'm beating her to the water. That's how fast the shortcut was. So how nutty is that? She was right on that uh, blue beach access trail. This is too cool. All oh, people are setting up other tents that look just like ours. Hmm, copycats. That's all right. This is a great day to copy somebody. Check this out, folks. They actually have beachside delivery service. Food menu available along with cocktails, beer, and non-alcoholic beverages. We also offer a variety of snacks and ice cream treats delivered directly to you on the beach. Choose your convenient pickup spot, green, red, or blue lifeguard stand. And we are by the blue lifeguard stand. That is absolutely awesome. So many, like, canopy-type tents out here that I'm assuming you can rent those somewhere. So we didn't stop at any of the concession stands to see what amenities they have to offer. But something I did just notice, maybe over my shoulder somebody can spot it, but something I've never seen before, there is Amish people on the beach. That literally blows me away. Not that this is a modern convenience that they should not be indulging in whatsoever. I just didn't think they took their clothes off to get into the water. I thought they showered with clothes on. All right, I just talked to somebody who I thought was like a beach patrol lifeguard, but they may have just been working for that company that I literally just filmed the sign of. And I was asking them questions about the jellyfish. They had no clue, and they told me that all jellyfish sting, which I don't think so because these ones didn't have tentacles. And I know I've seen nature shows where they've talked about non-stinging jellyfish. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm not, still not gonna touch them, still not gonna play with them, not gonna let the kids touch them and play with them. But they're all over the place. They're literally all over the beach. And you might accidentally step on one not knowing that it's already washed ashore because not all of them have circles around them. And as the tide is coming up, it's washing away the circles, but the jellyfish are staying in the sand. So gotta be careful, but I just busted out the drone. I hope nobody gets mad that I'm flying this. I'm pretty far away from everybody. I am gonna try and fly it as close to the water as possible. I am nervous that I'm gonna lose it, so I definitely don't want that to happen. So we're gonna keep it safe, we're gonna keep it fun, and let's go. What an absolutely breathtaking view. Holy moly, I had no clue there was such a beautiful area of this beach. And it's so funny if you could see in the video where that everybody who has come to the beach, they've come out of that main section where the concession stands are, and they literally just park somewhere within the next like 50 yards or so. But if you go down, there's like nobody down there. There's random people, the smart ones who know that they'll have the beach pretty much to themselves if they just go a little bit further. But I don't know if it's just me, but it looked like the water was bluer over there as well. So if you come out of the... Uh, the beach access area and you turn to your left and you keep going it looked like the water was blue it might just be because the sun is on this side maybe it's casting a weird reflection for us you can't see as clear as the area over there but i'm almost super curious as to go check it out but that's really far and i'd hate to leave the kids and family for that long i know they're in good hands there's several adults there's five other adults besides for myself that are here that could watch the kids and i know they'd be safe but they love their dear old dad and their dear old dad loves them and I'd hate to explore this beautiful area without them. I might take Jackson, I might take Evelyn, but I know Yazzie and the baby have to stay with mommy or maybe we'll all go. That's not a bad idea. Let's see what happens. Something I absolutely love besides for the people hoof tracks, you can see the, the little seagull paths and goodness gracious, who knows where they go because if I had wings, I'd never touch the ground. But look at these things go and they're all flying around there grabbing people's food i don't know from where there was a whole flock of seagulls just a second ago they're playing some pretty decent music check yeah, out what these beautiful fun. kids are doing what are you guys building a foot relaxer a foot relaxer oh my goodness you're so cute are you guys having so much fun on this beautiful day so far so relaxing did you know that this entire beach area it goes for forever yeah. And I saw in the drone that everybody's coming out of that main section where the food is just right there. Uh -huh. And they're camping within the, like 50 yards of either side of that. But beyond that, nobody goes. And the water looks huh. so super clear and blue over there. And there was no waves. So like, you're saying like next time we need to come out and go all, all the way, the way down. And well, then, and any, anybody else us? who's watching this needs to go to the right. Yeah, you guys. Yes, because that's where we're going to go too, gonna right? Yes. There. All right, good. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> yes, but it is absolutely gorgeous down there. And it's so surprising how people just come and camp immediately because 
Seriously, well, straight down that way. Carrying all the chairs. Yes. All the luggage. I agree. Like, Let's just. How is he doing? Are you tired of being carried around? <laughs> uh, he, I put his feet oh in, my but goodness. he didn't really like it. He was like, Rah! No way. He loves water. He's a water baby. You a little sea monkey? He's in this he said, yep. Oh my, and the water just keeps getting better and better as this day gets warmer and warmer because I think this is peak hotness right now for today. It's only about 80. And this is the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know how cold it runs, but it's pretty chilly. I'm hoping to see more of these jellyfish just floating around and i do want to go ask the lifeguard that's what i was instructed to do and i might end up doing that but we'll see if we ever go back that way i'd love to take the family there's people like way out there blows my mind they're way out there they might not know either that or they know that these jellyfish are non-stinging but i'm sure there's other types of jellyfish in this water that may or may not be stinging you know what i'm just gonna pop out the old good old google and do some research right now it is the beginning to mid of February, so we'll see what type of jellyfish are in this area right now. Maybe spawning, maybe not spawning, maybe just existing. We'll see. On today's episode, a sea monkey sprouts her fins and travels back to the water. And as she gets closer, they disappear back into legs. Well, daddy sea monkey. Oh no, a second baby sea monkey and a third baby sea monkey. All of the sea monkeys have decided to join Papa. Oh, they're just here for some water. There's tons of it, folks. Take as much as you need. I 100% could have brought out my metal detector and used it for the first time today. It's been sitting in the box for months. A company sent it to me months ago, and then I'm guessing whoever was their manager of my account got fired or got transferred because I never heard from them again, and they never asked me to make the video, so I'll have to do that on my own accord sometime soon, probably Probably in a few weeks, I'll bust that thing out and we'll have a good time searching. But I could tell if I had that thing today, this would be a great day to go with searching. The local wildlife are bickering over scraps. I don't even know what this thing is eating. Like, what is this thing chasing? I'm going to have to stop it because that might just be a piece of plastic. I don't think that's really good. Oh, it's a cucumber. Good for you, Mr. Seagull. Good for you. You see what he found? Do you see what that seagull found? He found a cucumber. Is that your favorite? You gonna go fight him for it? Go tell him mine, mine, mine. You got this, baby, I'm, I'm watching you. Go make Papa proud. Look at that bird. She's thinking about it too. Oh, she wants that cucumber. How absolutely adorable. Yeah, you stomp, stomp and flop. Show them monkeys. Show them flying monkeys who's boss. All right, so on the way back with my little sea monkey, we are following those beautiful seabirds. I found a beautiful shell. Evelyn just found this one, my Evelyn. And I handed it to Yazzie and we raced back and somewhere along the trail we were stomping. She beat me, crushed me, absolutely de destroyed me. I didn't even stand a chance. She went flying through the, through the sand. I could barely get through it. And she dropped her beautiful shell and now we have a rescue team looking for it, but this is what happens. This is what happens to your rescue team. They like to take breaks nonstop. Guys, we've got things to do. You're gonna get sand where you don't want sand. Remember you were complaining earlier about sitting on sand? Now you're living in it. Are you having so much fun? Oh my God, oh what did you find? I thought I saw a jellyfish. You thought you saw a jellyfish. They're kind of hard to see, but we've spotted a few in the water. Oh yeah. Some guy just made an amazing catch. He should be on the football teams that are playing in the Super Bowl today. And the only team that I know about that's playing is the Chiefs because of all the news about T-Swift dating somebody that plays foosball. If you guys have been watching this show for years, you'll know that I loved Petoskey hunting up when we were in Kelly's Island. And this is reminiscent of that. I'm walking along the beach now with the kids. For the best shells, and they're literally just sitting there. You just pick them up. A lot of them are broken, which is fine because the tide just keeps pushing them in, pulling them back. So they're collecting them and they're putting them in their cool little exfoliator their foot exfoliator right What's an exfoliator? this is exfoliators it's a rough type of stuff that helps to dig through and rub away see she's got the right idea over there she's exfoli exfoliating her feet with the sand the honey's doing it too she's got itchy foot syndrome I'm like a dog. we're gonna go all along the whole beach looking for the best possible shells i found some really cool ones but we're gonna find some cooler ones Yes, yeah, sand dollars as well. I love sand dollars. 
I, I need to collect a million of those. Yeah. All right, so cool. We actually have a marine biologist on site, George Costanza, wannabe. And she's saying that these are dead and they can't actually sting you, but look at that. They are safe to touch. Oh my God. As long as you don't touch the tentacles, right? What does it feel like? Jelly. Okay, yes. It. They're jellyfish. Very cool. And they are dead. All the ones on shore are dead. They dehydrate really fast. How fast would you say? Um, I mean, with the, the amount of the water, the sunlight hitting them, the salt differential in the air, I would say probably an hour or two. Wow, wow. that's really fast. It goes like this. Ah, that one I stinged at me. It did? Ow. Yeah, a little sting? It's not so painful, is it? I did it. it get it up again! It's dead. All right, we're going to leave it alone now, though. No! It's going to have a little dramatic effect. Of course. I actually cut it open a little. All right, so cool enough, the marine biologist, her name is Destiny, I told her it was Destiny that she ended up in our presence at this time while I'm giving out terrible information about this stuff. She's actually, she majored in marine biology, correct? Undergraduate marine biology. Her undergraduate, there she is. Science and wildlife Hi, and I have stage fright, just so That's you know. okay, so do I, trust me, trust me, so do I. But you were telling me so many interesting facts I have to feature on the channel because I'm just out here talking out of my, literally, out of my backside. Okay, but you okay. are doing such a wonderful job correcting all the mistakes that I've made, literally in just this episode. So please tell me what you said about the jellyfish. Um, so the jellyfish, when they come up on shore, they are um, dehydrated and more than likely dead. So they will also um, <clears throat> be okay to touch, but they can't see you for up to two weeks. I've had them in my hands all day. Kids have been touching them and things like that. But if you see them in the water and they're moving, stand clear because you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And they taste delicious. I was licking a couple of them, so if you guys want to do that as well, I highly suggest. See? Isn't that a good fact, right? Yeah, yes. actual facts, right? Lick the jellyfish. It's fun to do. <laughs> See, right? I can say that. You're a mean broad. She's not correcting I'm me. I'm not responsible for anything. <laughs> this is a disclosure. He's got information himself, and he's got advice for me, too. It'll and definitely whatever say he at the runs bottom, with, don't lick the jellyfish. Whatever he runs with, all on him. And so, so she got on the subject of, like, protected wildlife and how you're not supposed to touch certain things. And she was telling me that in some areas of the country, including Washington, in the Squalee land particularly, right? Yeah, so a lot of the Indian reservations still exist in Washington State, and there is a salmon there that is protected, and if you bring that salmon up, and even just the thin surface of the water, you can get a felony charge for it. A felony, and you guys know me. If I didn't know this information, I'd be on the Squalee land, and I'd be like, look, I found the fish, and I'd be in prison. So thank you, Destiny, you just saved, <laughs> saved my you, life. Saved yeah. you, saved you. Because this show would take a really weird turn if it was taken from prison, I promise you. You guys would not like me in prison. It'd be weird. Hey. The animal species is a very, very yes, a intense, woman of my own controversial. Heart. Oh my gosh, she's a conservation enthusiast, yeah. to say the least, right? Yeah. Yes, you've gone to several places and you've done several conservation type things. Yeah, I've been to all the seven states. Um, wow, I and we've been to only, only seven states. Only seven states. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just gonna say I don't support zoos. Um, I don't support SeaWorld, Fish Gardens, animals in confinement. They're like, oh, you're a wildlife conservation major. Why wouldn't you support that? I think that captivity um, is where an animal stays for the rest of its life. Um, over 70% of the wildlife that's released from the zoos is killed within the first year because oh, they go to um, humans for food because that's what they're so used to getting. Uh, and it's a controversial oh, wow. thing. And they're thinking it's an animal attack. But if you were a human and you didn't know where to go get food, you would go to another human to find something or a resource that was available to you. Um, and I believe that the American eye is um, money-based, wholeheartedly so. money-based. And if someone is funding something and they're not seeing results, why would they continue to fund it? Um, in Washington State, Point Defiance Zoo, I actually exposed them. Um, they had a tiger named Raja. She had been in the zoo for a long time. And um, they brought a male in to mate with her, and he ended up killing her. Um, and they just sent out an apology letter saying they were just so sorry what had happened to Raja. Um, and that was pretty much it. That was oh, that's it. terrible. And, like, I saw, like, species inside the zoo that weren't being taken care of. Like, they had buckets of water instead. They had um, no, like, plants in their enclosures or anything like that. The ground had been beaten up. They are pacing back and forth, which is known as psychosis. Um, it's kind of like a psychotic deficiency that they have in their head. No, I they completely don't... understand because yeah. humans do that as well. Yeah. When we're confined to a time, yeah. like 2020 was a horrible time for all of us. And if you were confined and you were not used to being confined, you paced 100%. You paced around your house thinking yes, of things absolutely. to do. That makes so much um, sense. And some animals, they wait years 
for mates Aww. to be delivered to them. Um, I saw a few of the um, monkeys. They were by themselves and they were just on the ground, just laying there, depressed. Aww, man, and like, it's just hard to give an adaptation lesson to someone. Like, look at the human species. Um, we have a hard time adapting and we fear change. So we're gonna yes. do whatever it takes to prevent most things happening to us. But when you have an animal and you don't speak the same language, it's it's more lesson based or motion taught things yes. like that. And, and you it's... put your emotions into that animal yeah. ninety yeah. percent of the time, and you think you know what that animal's saying, but you really have no clue. So I wholeheartedly believe that the zoo, when the funding runs out, that zoo is just what it is, and they depend on the the veterinarian care inside of it, the containers that they're in, and the people who take care of them. And like when I interview people, when I did my movie for college, people weren't oh, I buy my tickets because it funds their, their captivity program, or I buy from the gift shop because 25% of my sales go back to the zoo. If my kids think it's cool, it's something for us to do on the weekends, it, we can't see this anywhere else. And, you know, it's, like, really disheartening to me, that kind of thing. And I live in Florida, and I've not been to SeaWorld. I've not been to Busch Gardens, and I will stand firm and wholeheartedly on things I do not support. Um, there's 151 zoos in the USA that are accredited, and if $72 million alone was paid out for employee salary at the St. Louis Zoo. Um, and if we took all of the money that was going to all the zoos, we would be able to save 856 animals and species and plants in their natural habitats to be able to be funded. That's my new goal. You said $72 million? Just 70, a little $72 million That's in it? salary. That's my new goal. The largest zoo in America is in North Carolina with 500 acres. But if you think about it, 500 acres really isn't that big for people who own more acreage than that yeah um the australia zoo um the irvins own it bindi and um robert irwin and their mom oh. um they have 700 acres 700 acres um in australia for their animals and only 500 of those acres are available to the public which is neat because they have an animal sanctuary hospital where they bring animals in rehabilitate them tag them and mark them and let them go and they don't keep them in captivity. They bring them in, rehabilitate, and send them back out. And they um, make sure that they're okay to go. And that even if they're not, that they're going to be able to be tracked and that kind of thing. But I think that the animal sanctuary they have and the wildlife hospital they have, they're doing great and wonderful things. And the fact they have 700 acres and only 500 open to the public means they have a lot of animals there and that they're taking care of them responsibly and things like that. But... I don't want to ramble on too long for this channel. That was absolutely so, wonderful. Thank you so much yeah, for the information. Of I truly really appreciate it. Can I get a hug? Yeah. You are amazing. That was too cool. Thank you so much for all of Like, so How random. A guy named George walking on the beach runs across a marine biologist. And of course, George Cassandra is one of my favorite characters. So, of course, that was something that was just meant to happen. The destiny was there. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll run into you again somewhere along the line. And you'll tell me all your new cool discoveries and stuff that you've been fighting for. I love it. I love the passion. Thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful talking with Destiny. She really opened my eyes to a lot of stuff and I hope a lot of people gain some great information from her, but check out the sack on the hunt, finding our nature. Look at these cute little birds. These are some of the cutest things I've ever seen. Oh my goodness, and they're chit-chatting away. I wouldn't want to be on this show either if I was you. Too cute. All right, so where's a marine biologist when you need one? But of course, I'm not asking questions about the marine life right now. I want to know what these birds are. And the wonderful family that we're with, the husband, Dan, mentioned that it might be a sandpiper. So let's take a look. Sandpipers have spots and this one does not have spots. But look at that cute bird. Oh, this big old seagull taking a bath. That is such a cute bird. I love it. Such wonky feet. I bet they're fast. But those little birds, those are the ones that I'm super duper curious about. Look at them. They look like, <laughs> they look like moving shells just on the sand. And that drum circle, I don't know if you guys can hear that in this. That is bellowing. But there is a crowd building way over there which is kind of nice because the beach is clearing up there's a lot more room for activities check this out there's like nobody around now tons of room for activities everybody's migrating towards that sound that jungle beat that mm, 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 mm. like we're all about to play a big game of jumanji and i'm all for it so we're gonna get over there as soon as we can but i want to play in this water some more it's absolutely beautiful and i gotta figure out what these birds are i gotta get close enough to that one to get a google lens shot of it maybe if i take a picture right now I might get lucky. Check it out. Look what Jackson has been building. I used wet sand and it instantly solidified. Show us how you did it. So I grabbed some wet sand and then just uh, grabbed the wet sand. And Jackson. It there. Solidified. That is so cool. And check it out, folks. The honey is making sandwiches right now and the predators are around. 
They are just waiting. Look at him stalking right there. Head low, trying to go unnoticed. Ready to steal any type of bread. She's making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And here come those little ones too, which I'm pretty sure are a form of sandpiper. So adorable. Oh, Evelyn's tossing them stuff. You're about to cause so much commotion. Let's not do that. Grandma Jan is freaking out in her seat right now. Look at that, they're screaming. She's got food, she's got food. See, you gotta be careful. They will snatch that bag out of your hand, girl. All right, I'm gonna go scare them away now. All right, the honey's over there dumping food. I don't know why. She's causing a commotion by the ocean. Careful, those things have diseases. She's officially turned herself into the bird lady from Home Alone 2. Yes, they're trained professionals. Anybody on this show is a trained professional except for me. But look at all the little sandy birds coming. Oh, I wanted you to feed those ones so bad. Look at them all coming in a little troop. They're so adorable. Check that out. The big dogs, the sheriffs of the beach. They got super cool ATVs. That is awesome. Wow, look at her. So majestic on her steed. Check this out, folks. We're going to this wonderful pizza place called Rip Fire right here, and we were looking for a spot, and our friends told us they actually met us here. Check out where I got to park. Boom! <laughs> Can't believe this spot was available. And even more funny than that, when we were pulling through and we saw this spot and we get out of our car, our friends literally parked right behind us. So how cool is that? This place is awesome. I can't wait to show you guys what they got. Just in general, this little Siesta Key uh, beach town is absolutely beautiful. So much more beautiful than some of the beach towns I've been to, but we're not comparing beach towns. We're just enjoying beach towns. I gotta get across this road because people are coming quick. They wanna eat and so do I. Oh man, this looks so nice. Check this out. Rip Fire Pizza, you get custom pizzas, local craft beer. Let's get in here and see what kind of menu they got. The build your own pizza, signatures, lots to see, lots to do, lots to eat, and prices are actually really, really important. Look at those fountain drinks, good lord, no public restrooms, that's not good. I gotta go. Check this out, they are making these beautiful pizzas, and look behind them, that wonderful wood stove, is shoving it in there right now. This is gonna be so good, but I wanted to show you guys the drink selection they have, all kinds of craft and draft beers. Not too much for kids. Oh, they do have bottles of water. I'm actually on a mission to go get our bottles of water out of the car. Oh, I gotta have that right there. That is one of my favorites. Guava. Passion fruit is my other favorite. But I'm gonna show you guys some more of this area around here. Something that I noticed that I gotta share with everybody. And I just now realized that I re released my video during uh, Super Bowl. So look at that. The Scobs. He has to keep Oyster Bar. I'd love to go there, but not this time. There's a surf and skate shop on the other side. There's Flavino's Martini Bar, which if I was a younger man, that's where I'd be going for sure. As soon as I get a chance, I'll get across the street and get back to our food so I can have something to eat. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people, but look at this cool thing. The family that we're with, the mom, Melissa, makes these. How absolutely phenomenal. These are some of the coolest crayons I've ever seen. Check this beautiful pizza that I get all to myself. This is one of my favorite style of pizzas. You got pepperoni, mushroom, black olives, and the ever so sweet pineapple. I love the sweet and the sour, or I guess the uh, salty is a better way to put it, the uh, marinara, the pizza sauce. So good. Oh my goodness, I had the honey order my pizza, and if I would have known there was all these other extra ingredients, I would have thrown on some green olives, some artichokes. What else do they got? Some tomatoes, some pimenta, just like the bugs. Oh my god, that looks like gyro meat right there. Oh man, there's chicken in the back, some bacon. Oh, I would have loaded this thing up. But I came over here to get that delicious guava juice. And check it out, folks. Only four ingredients. Water, fresh lemons, guava, and Florida pure cane sugar. This is going to be absolutely delightful. I can just tell. Check out this beautiful picture that Jackson painted. This is his ocean. That is so cool. If you want to get your own, make sure you ask. And he'll make you another one. How much are we selling these for? Two dollars. You look like you just got done sucking somebody's blood. <laughs> This is the 2024 edition of Dracula. Yeah. All right, we just made it to the drum circle. We got Baron asleep. The beat lulled him to sleep. Mom and the kids are in there. 
check them out. They're all hula hooping. So cute. circle if you know what I mean. <laughs> it definitely smells and there's some people that are trans in there but this is absolutely glorious. What a wonderful beautiful amazing day. Feels like a vacation in our vacationing life because that's what this life of travel is all about. Hanging out with people that you love in places that you want to be. No stress, drama free. 100% is what I'd rather be doing with my life than spending it behind a desk or even working for anybody else nowadays. This is where life's at, spending time, the little time that we're given on this beautiful earth with people that matter. So thank you all so very much for watching. You know what to do if you haven't subscribed already. Definitely like this video. Check out our other social media platforms and find some place that you love and hang out with people that you love and care about and that care about you because that's what life's about. I'll catch you in the next one, folks.